before we start talking about any updates, um, we're going, we wanted to talk about ADR8 because somebody in the call has, I think, some questions I would like to discuss that. And Aditya needs to leave the call a bit early. Um, a case that was you, right, that you wanted to discuss something? Hello, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I just want to, I just want to understand what's going on with that, or like, yeah, okay. yeah. I, I have like very basic questions. Cool. Um, so we have a testing branch up with the interfaces for ABC Go and the applications. Um, so kind of the next step is to start working with the VM teams to to see um, if they can integrate it, if they have any changes that they need. Um, so Osmosis is taking a look at it later this week, early next week. Um, I've been playing around with their their middleware to see if I can I can make some of the changes myself. Um, tomorrow I'm working with Evanos to to get an EVM integration. Um, so so yeah, it's kind of still starting to do the integration now, and then it's still kind of open to um, to changes as we get feedback from from folks. Okay, so so I guess like I don't, I just sort of like trying to understand how this all fits together. Like, you're you're doing something in IBC Go, and that's gonna let the Osmosis team implement something in WasmD that's gonna let Cosm Wasm contracts get these hooks. You're adding to IBC Go. Um, no, it's not. It's not that there are hooks getting added to IBC Go. It's just that. What we're exposing are kind of these sort of addresses that can basically on a packet. Uh, we're just exposing which um, which given a particular packet, which smart contract to send a call back to. That's all we're exposing to the ABC Go side, and then there are specific um, middlewares for the the different VMs in question that will take that information and then do the appropriate callback and someone what is the, can you post a link to this because that's not what i get when i look search for adr8 i get the uh, cosmos I believe, okay so this is i think suzanne posted the testing branch um but we can also um, link the uh the actual adr yeah i will show it here there was a pre-existing adr8 just to confuse things um we're, we're there's the uh there's the sdk adrs and the uh, there are the ibc adrs that are two separate different oh things. i see yeah. thank you uh, uh, we, we have an independent numbering system in here That's, yeah um do you have any other questions i guess on the status and how things are working yeah, so I guess I'm just like so so I should be I should is there somewhere in the osmosis like where can I follow the non IBC go part of this I guess I want to I want to like you know I want to use this <laughs> so I want to like who can I and you're, to, like, just to be clear you're a cosm wasm yeah um, are you building an IBC application or are you building a smart contract that's going to use an IBC application? Um, I'm building a smart, con I want to use interchain accounts. Okay. Yeah. Um, then I would say probably track the, the osmosis um, changes because that's probably the most relevant to you. Okay. And do you know what, like where this happened? Are those, is that something osmosis yeah. is okay yeah it's on the osmosis repo it's called wasm hooks um we're also talking to confio on whether they like because you know eventually this will live outside of um osmosis because we want it to be you know broadly relevant for all um possible wasm chains so we will look at um more or less to place it like confio was briefly mentioning putting it in wasmd um, so that might be where it eventually goes. But for now, latest state of the art is in osmosis. I have a question. Yeah. Are the calls synchronous or asynchronous? 
um, that is up to you. Uh, we like big, it is not, uh, we're not hard coding the calls at all into IBC Go. Um, so the Agoric, um, the Agoric team can build a, like a middleware that targets these these uh, smart contracts in, in an asynchronous way if they wish. So the up call is not, uh, so this up call is not built into the IBC module? No, so because it's it's the the actual call into the smart contract will depend on the, the VM you're using. Um, so like in the Agora case, what we would do is that you would have some, like basically you would have a middleware that like catches the the particular packet in question and knows which smart contract to call. Um, but then, you know, in the WASM and FMOS case, likely they're just going to call it directly as part of their packet processing. But what you might do is to store it in some queue and then later execute it down the line. Um, that's kind of, yeah, the, the flexibility there is for you. That's kind of why we wanted to do it this way. So each VM has its own call pattern. But it's like in your particular case, it would be asynchronous as well. Um, yeah. Okay. The changes, the changes in IBC Go are basically just adding this interface so that a middleware can say, I have this packet. What is the uh, contract address that I should be calling to on the source side? What is the contract address I should be calling to on the destination side? It's just that small interface that is optional for different uh, that IBC applications can implement if they want to kind of support this functionality. Cool. Any more around that? Sorry. Can I ask a really dumb question? I don't. I don't know what an IBC middleware is. Not um, a dumb question. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I guess maybe the easiest way to describe that is when a chain accepts a packet, there's a handler that gets run. The middleware is a function that wraps the handler and gets called prior to the official handler getting called. So it works just like middleware in HTTP. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks. And so that's Great. like, okay, so then you build hooks on top of that because you're exactly working on when you get a packet. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, we have docs on both how to write and use it that maybe we can link in the agenda. Well, thanks, guys. Um, Zeke, one of the nice things about middleware um, is it's a lighter weight Cosmos module, so there's a lot less boilerplate, and there's realistically only a couple of functions that you need to write, so they are relatively quick. Yeah. And also, so, if you need help with that, like hit up Justin. Justin's worked on a bunch of those. Thank you. Uh, yeah, in the middleware that... For example, as most of writing, all the handshake calls are just no ops. So it, it would really just be packet processing that you have to fill in. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. That I think that last point about skipping the handshakes. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Um, any more questions about ADR8? Or we move on otherwise? Uh, my, my question is, you know, back to to low level questions callback packet data has like get source callback address you would you would mention that the, and get destination callback address mm -hmm. these addresses are strings what do these addresses mean what are they of what allows you to use one yeah so all that is the ibc packet developer is kind of in control of so um for example in transfer they would just return the sender and receiver fields um that's an example um, so these strings would be uh, interpretable addresses by by the, the middleware and the way that we handle them in in osmosis, for example, in, in the osmosis wasm hooks is to just cast them into an address, and if they don't cast correctly, we just continue and don't don't call the the callback. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the specific interfaces are. Kind of, yeah, we're integrating them on, on the WASM side and Nemo side, but they are on a testing branch. Um, so this, like, kind of, you know, if you have suggestions, now is the time. 
to to kind of comment them or, or put it on on an issue or something. Um, so I, I haven't had a chance to read ADR8, but I guess I'm just trying to see like the um, importance of this. So I guess mm -hmm. right now, um, I, I believe like smart contracts can, uh, you know, receive these packets with, um, uh, I guess by WASM routing the packets to the smart contracts. Why, um, why is it, it or why, why is this change, um, I guess, important? Um, is yeah. it just so? Is it just so that the middleware has this capability, or is there, I guess, like something bigger in mind? No. So I think what you're referring to is when the Wasm contract itself is an IBC application. So if the Cosm Wasm smart contract or something is an IBC application that that's defining its own packets and sending it, um, but this is largely for the case where. Um, the smart contract is a user of IBC app. So like, if you think about it in the off-chain case, um, right, I'm a human being who can read the, the state of the chain and I send a transfer. Um, and when I know when it's received and then I can then do actions on the other chain um, as a response to it. Um, and secondly, if, if I'm the sender itself, then I know I can read the chain for, for the acknowledgement and then do my own my own action, but smart contracts are all um, triggered by transactions or, or by calls to them. So they're not like passively reading state. So for example, if I want to send a packet, like let's say I'm a smart contract that sends a transfer packet, right? That's going to go to ICS-20 in on the go side and ICS-20 is going to do the receive and the send the receive and acknowledgement. Um, but then like the smart contract that originally sent that packet will never be notified um, that the acknowledgement has come in. Um, so if I want to then uh, do some sort of more complex flow as a smart, as an on-chain um, smart contract, like send some tokens. And then once I know that they're successful, I'm going to send an ICA message to LP them, for example. Um, the right, that right now is not very possible. Um, or it is, but it's like very hacky to to really be able to do it. So this is kind of one on the acknowledgement side and timeout side, getting the original sender a like basically what happened at the end of the packet lifecycle, and then also on the receive side, um, being able to then you know send a particular message to the smart contract. Like so let's say if I send money to a smart contract right now in ICS twenty, um, that money will go to the smart contract balance, but then like um, the smart contract will not be triggered at all really it'll just have its balance updated but now i can send it and then along with some instructions um that will get called as to what to do with it oh that's really cool thank you yeah cool any more questions all right then we move to the update from product uh, susanna um yeah, so I guess uh, just thanks for everyone that filled in the feedback. Um, actually, just kind of summarized what the main points were is most people are joining to get updates, understand the technical developments, give feature requests, and um, most people seem like broadly happy with the feed with the format. Um, some of the like actionable feedback of what we could change is. Um, when something is discussed or something, give a better idea of who to contact, um, more technical discussion and focus on like the problem being solved. So I guess like some of the context that like Aditya just gave then is kind of feeding into that. Um, and then there were some very like specific suggestions of covering some specific topics. So um, we plan to like open this call up more to the community and then kind of have other people working on these specific topics who could like share their specific work on this. I think it makes most sense because for instance, the fraud proofs or IBC for rollups, um, there's clearly some people specifically working on that um, who would have probably more to say. <laughs> um, and then in the same way that the Comet BFT has, and I think the FCK also has, um, we'll try and transfer this to a Google group. So it's not like, um it's not like one massive invite that people have to join up to and stuff 
um, it's a bit more like open and the updates there and the Google Doc for the agenda will be there. Um, other than that, I mean, unless anyone else has anything else to say, but that seemed to be the outcome. Um, then, yeah, we have like an updated data dashboard, which was kind of ready for the two year anniversary. So if you're interested in seeing some data, um, it's, I think it's up to February of this year, like check it out. And just an update on some of the things that we'd be planning to do on the product side is keeping in the theme, like our kind of global themes of things to focus on for IBC this year, um, app composability and upgradability are two big themes. So some of the like things I want to look a bit more into is um, one concern was that there's not right now a way to kind of order packets across channel. Um, I think ADR8 could kind of solve this a bit, but we want to look into that a bit further. Um, a big kind of thing that people are starting to use IBC for is more like composable workflows. So doing a token transfer and then another action and a pain point is that these uh, these like workflows aren't atomic, like your token transfer might be successful, but then your follow-up action might fail and then your tokens are just gonna be there like left. Um, and this is a bit of a pain point. So do a bit more research in there. Um, and broadcast channels, which would enable um, like pub sub kind of queries. And then in the theme of upgradability, um, looking a bit more into um there were a couple of requests to change client parameters of clients that aren't frozen or expired if they've just been spun up um without like the desired parameters or um like chains might be changing their block speed over time and then they decide they want to um modify some parameters or things like this um look a bit more into these case there and generally look a bit more into what other interoperability protocols are doing and see if there's things that could be relevant to be adopted by IBC. And then as well as research, just supporting um, the adoption of V8. So that would have channel upgradability and two of the big features that would be enabled. It would be um, theme and aware and um. whichever kind of um, approach is taken. Cool. Thank you, Susanna. Any any questions for Susanna? Well, Anybody? Thank you for doing that. That that data is really great, and I'm glad that we're acting on. Is that, I guess I have one quick question about the data project, which is wonderful. And thank you guys for uh, doing that. Um, is there any plans to sort of continue that collection and sort of add additional features to that dashboard? Um, and like, are you guys interested in partnering with some other folks on that? I think that that's a broadly useful thing for IBC as a community, both from a technical perspective, i.e., packet drops and, and different sort of uh, performance metrics that we can use to improve the software. And then also from a marketing perspective, the ability to show how much value is being transferred and other things. Um, I think that just one other sort of uncategorized comment on that, um, all of the dashboards are expressed in amount of value transferred, which is fantastic. Like that, that's definitely very interesting. However, volume really fell off after the Terra collapse, both because of uh, the Terra volume and the price collapse. Um, so having number of packets transferred as well as volume might be able to let us show some like slightly nicer looking dashboards. So uh, yeah, anyway, I, I guess like that's fantastic. Uh, I want more. <laughs> um, so yeah, who's, who's leading that project? Yeah, so Addy has been doing Addy on the call yeah so yeah. I guess like I have been thinking of sort of adding more chains to the drop packet so like right now on the dashboard um it only shows Cosmos Hub Juno and Osmosis but it would be nice to like incorporate more chains in there um 
also like it still only shows ICS20 packets. We could still look at like interchain accounts, all of that stuff. Um, so that's also kind of like on my mind. Um, um, yeah, but happy to partner with like other teams, you know, for like marketing purposes or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that like map of zones is super cool. Uh, but this oh, is the IBC, this is the IBC dashboard we need, and um, yeah, it's just incredible. Hey, uh, hi, can you mind muting? Um, it, it's it's really great work, Addy. Um, maybe we can grab some time with you and the Strange Love team, and we can sort of chat through what resources we might be able to dedicate to this too. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Okay, great. We can follow up on our joint channel. Cool. All right, thanks then uh, about the engineering updates. Uh, on V7.1, we're working with the um, Strange Love Relay team and Agoric on the integration. Um, maybe we'll hear more about this uh, from Justin uh, a bit later in the update. Uh, but yeah, uh, the local host client work from IBC Go side is finished. Uh, then ADR8, well, Aditi already talked about it. So we have the feature branch with the interface that he uh, mentioned and, and the implementations for the packet data for transfer and interesting accounts. Uh, we're also working with uh, Osmosis on a PR that they opened uh, to add um, uh, to store in a state the total amount that it's in escrow uh, for the transfer channels. Uh, so yeah, working on that with them and try to get that also in 7.1. Uh, then uh, the team is also working on channel upgradability, um, which should be released in V8, uh, working on the init and try steps of the handshake and the timeout cancellation and restore channel logic. Uh, work is going well um, and probably uh, not this iteration, but the iteration afterwards, uh, at the end of that iteration, we could have like the happy path end-to-end um, -end handshake logic working. Um, yeah, um, and this iteration, we also uh, are going to tag um, a bunch of releases for the previous lines before V5 and V6 with the newer versions of uh, SDK and also working on uh, on the Western clients PR uh, together with the strange love and composable uh, starting to do a, the reviewing working um, doing some some PRs uh, uh, on on the feature branch all right uh, so that's a bit what's going on at the moment engineering inside any questions All right, if not, then on the protocol, uh, we have uh, reviewed the PR that is open for ICS 8 for Western clients and uh, also um, share some feedback. Um, also about path and winding, some discussions uh, there. Uh, Aditya, Susanna having some, some calls with the strange love. Uh, about uh, using the middleware, the path packet forward middleware to repurpose it for path unwinding. Uh, we're also um, now uh, assessing uh, the RFC that uh, the skip team um, has written to actually uh, embed the path unwinding in, in the transfer app directly. Uh, so we're going to yeah, uh, spend some time to think like what would be the best approach uh, and we will try to have a um, decision that we will share uh, in the next call. So that's a bit what's going on uh, as well on the protocol. Any questions? All right, if not, then we can move to the relayer teams. Um, Starting with Hermes, um, I think Luca is in the call. Yes, I'm here. Hey, so uh, last week we released Hermes 1.4, which has the multi-version support between uh, Tendermint 034 and Comet BFT Tendermint 037. 
And now we've started looking into the channel upgradability as well as uh, misbehavior detection. And we're also improving the ICS uh, consumer chain support. Okay, cool. Um, improving the support for ICS con uh, consumer chains. You said yeah, that. exactly. And I think there were a few things that needed to be improved. Uh, I saw Anka working on a few PRs. Okay, cool. Great. Uh, if you have uh, any questions about channel upgradability, yeah, re reach to us. Um, and we'll also try to keep you, yeah, um, in, in the loop when there are changes that affect you. Okay, yeah. thanks. Cool. All right. Thanks, Luca. Uh, then from the relay team, Justin, I think he's also on the call. Yes. Uh, since the last call, we did cut two more RCs of v2.3, with the most recent one being RC4. Um, most of the additions in these last two have been around performance or bug fixes on order channels. Um, so we had some assumptions baked in around order channels from when we had uh, worked with like the interchain accounts demo, but Quasar launch kind of sussed out a few bugs that we had. So we've, we've fixed those. Um, the other thing that we have been working on is, is the local host IBC support. We've got that like half working. Um, so we had like a old, old PR that we were working on the old design and we realized that we had kind of cut out some of the, like, like the connection layer and the client layer completely the way that the old design was. So this just wasn't going to work for the new one. Um, so we like re-implemented most of that, but it's not quite over the finish line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, are you facing any problems, challenges, uh, any issues there that we can help with or? Uh, no, mo mostly just a time constraint. So okay. I've been wearing mini hats at Strange Love and haven't been coding as much as I uh, probably could be. All right. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, uh, Justin. Then. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, then next section, uh, other updates or topics. Anything anybody would like to discuss or ask? This is your time if you have any questions or you have any topics to discuss. Any feedback? All right. Um, then, um, if nothing else, if everything was clear from the updates, then we can wrap up. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Bye. See you. See you in two weeks. Meeting. Thank you. You. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, bye.